take our song books, turn to 395, 395. Mrs. Ely's favorite song, we'll stand together. In my heart there rings a melody, 395. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody. Heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody of love on the last will be my endless theme in glory with the angels i will sing it will be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring in my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Amen. You may be seated, and I'm having a little fun with Lydia over there. And uh, Brother Cable says, I know exactly what that's like. And so, uh, anyway, uh, the song leader never knows what timing they want to do. And so, uh, uh, it's, that's a fun song. You can do all kinds of stuff with that song, and that's a great song. But let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, we'll take uh, uh, some testimonies tonight. Brother Ryan will come with the song. Lord Jesus, we love you, and thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Lord, I pray that you would... Uh, uh, bless our time together. May it be a, a fun time, or may it be a, a time uh, that we can learn something. And God, I pray it be a time that we could uh, meet with you and, and glorify and honor you. Bless uh, tonight's service, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to song number 314 while we're thinking of our first testimony tonight. Ring the bells of heaven. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today For a soul returning from the wild See the Father meet him out upon the way Welcoming his weary wandering child Glory, glory, how the angels sing Glory, glory, how the loud hearts ring Tis the ransom army like a mighty sea, healing forth the anthem of the free. Ring the bells of heaven, there is joy today, for the wanderer now is reconciled. Yes, the soul is rescued from his sinful way, and is born anew in ransom child. Glory, glory, how the angels sing. Ring the bells of heaven, spread the feast today. Angels swell the glad, triumphant strain. Tell the joyful tidings, bear it far away. For a precious soul is born again. Glory, glory, how the angels sing. Glory, glory, how the loud harps ring. Tis the ransom army like a mighty sea, hailing forth the anthem of the free. Amen. Who has our first testimony tonight? Brother? Yes, sir. Yes. I'm 
my mom had a good birthday and all that, and Amen. she got a lot of stuff, and I, I gave her some money. Amen. And I'm glad the church member treated her good and all that. Amen. Awesome. And, and I gave her a wind charm. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, my birthday's coming up, brother. I don't know if you're... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's awesome. Anna? So my cousin Grayson that we've been praying for, she's had the, the surgery and everything. Um, this, just actually like 30 minutes ago, I got a text from my mom who said that they were actually able to talk to her. Like she was conscious. She was actually talking a little bit, kind of low and soft, but still... And she was actually able to eat a little bit today. So that's a huge blessing. Awesome. Who else tonight? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I might be moving into my apartment on um, Monday, maybe. Amen. 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 It's awesome. Praise the Lord. Who else? I actually have one. Um, a couple days ago, I had a coworker from high school. Um, called me, he calls me like every couple years, um, and just to catch up with me. Um, it was interesting, it was, it was nice to hear from him, his name was Alex, um, and he was just calling me, he was one of the people I was able to lead to the Lord when I was, uh, when I was in high school, I worked at at Panda, and um, it was just interesting, he called me up and um, just asked me some questions and told me some of the stuff he was going through in his life, and um, just ca caught up with me, it was really cool, it was really nice. Some of you teenagers that have these jobs, you never know. You never know the impact you'll make. Who else tonight? Really, you got another one? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to Disneyland with my family and all that. Amen. And well, once I go back out there, I'm going to go see my old boss. Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. You got Miss Shirley there in the back? Just want to thank everybody for the prayers and for the help that they've given me. And Amen. even though I'm a little bit weak, I'm, I'm here and I'm fine. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We're glad you're here. Amen. Who else tonight? These have been great. Let's look at our next song, what we're thinking. Uh, song number 185. I got to get over there as well. Song number 185, Rock of Ages. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy rib inside which flowed be of sin a double cure, save me from its guilt and power, not the labors of my hands. On the last, while I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see the on thy judgment thrown, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in it's grace singing. Who has our next testimony tonight? Brother Cable? Okay. I want to thank each and every one of you that participated in this event yesterday because it completely surprised me. <laughs> and th this church is full of love for one another. And though I had my late wife's first family there, we had our uh, uh, Laura's side of the family, 
but the most important one was our church family. And I thank each and every one of you. The three young ladies that sang yesterday, all I told them is sing out because you have a beautiful voice. Amen. And you can hear a pin drop Amen. in that hall when they sang. Amen. And their mother, thank you very much. It was a surprise. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Who else tonight? You got a third one, brother? Yeah, I can't wait to go see my old church family. All right. Amen. Where's that? In Long Beach. That's what I thought. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who else tonight? I have another one, um, but I just forgot it. <clears throat> oh, um, on Friday, the activity on Friday. <laughs> Tim's back there laughing at me. That happens more often than you think. Um, on Friday, the activity on Friday was a lot of fun. Um, I think I'm going to go pro. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just... I was, I was a little bit better than I thought I would be, but I was <clears throat> uh, too many slices for that. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I definitely want to go back. So Leo and I have already been talking about it. We want to go back. It was a lot of fun. Yes, sir? I was going to add on to that. Of course, uh, the, the activity that he's talking about, we did uh, top golf, which is uh, it's not like regular golf, but you try to hit it in the different holes there. So I was playing baseball and striking out a few times. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I was uh, blessed. We had uh, Ashley, who is uh, uh, new to our church, uh, came a couple of weeks ago, and she's come the last two weeks. I think she's out of town this week. Uh, but uh, she came to uh, our activity, and it's amazing. You know, my wife and I, we brought her to the activity, and uh, uh, she was going to start golfing on our side. And next thing I know, she was on the other side, the other uh, the other young adults had stolen her from our side, and uh, and uh, and we we probably uh, you know I don't know I didn't talk to her almost the rest of the activity, and so uh, I was just appreciative that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, young adults here that uh, see new folks coming in and uh, want to encourage them to be a part and uh, really working hard to uh, make people feel at home. And so and I know she came to the ladies' activity as well, sat with some ladies there and uh, felt very much at home. I think uh, I think it was my wife. Uh, she said, uh, "She said, you know, I've been looking for something, and I think this is, this is what I found." And so, uh, anyway, thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who else tonight? All right, let's look at our next song. Song number eighty-six. Song number eighty-six. Heaven for me. I've heard of a land that is wondrously fair. They say that its splendor is far beyond compare. In that place that's called heaven, my soul longs to be. For if Jesus is, it will be heaven. Amen. 
And who has our next testimony tonight? Anybody at all? Don't want to miss anybody. All right, Pastor. Amen. We'll take out our bulletins. If you need a bulletin, raise your hand. The ushers get one out to you. And I do appreciate and thankful for uh, Mrs. Aubin putting together the ladies thing on Saturday. And I did hear a lot of good stuff there about that. Sounds like uh, some of these ladies were party animals. They were just partying day and night. And so uh, anyway, but uh, thankful for the good, uh, good turnout there on that as well. On our announcement column, uh, look at that. We got the three amigos here tonight. Brother Cable, Brother Van, and Brother Jack Gerbitz, all three birthday boys this Thursday. We should make them sing a trio or something, uh, <laughs> sing happy birthday to themselves or whatever, but uh, amen. And we got Ladies Missions Group Tuesday, April 5th at 630, and then, of course, we do have our Easter egg hunt uh, coming up on Easter Sunday, and if you are able to provide some eggs there, Easter eggs for that, uh, just back here in the back of the Christian Resource uh, Room. And uh, we want a good amount of eggs there for the kids. And then pray for Easter. Pray that we see folks here. Uh, I hope that you're praying for every Sunday service especially. And God has been bringing us some uh, visitors uh, every Sunday. Been trying to preach on the gospel quite a bit on Sundays. And uh, so I, I pray, pray that you will be praying for that as well. Uh, we'll have our Easter outreach breakfast Saturday, April 16th. And that's at 9 o'clock in the Beck Hall. And uh, if you don't normally go out and pass out invitations, this is a, a good day to try to make plans to do that. And we've ordered uh, uh, Mrs. Aubin to put together uh, really nice uh, Easter brochures that we ordered out, and uh, we want to be able to give them out there. And hey, only one time a year that we can give these things out, so we want to make sure we get them all out. And uh, so anyway, come and be a part of that, and always a nice little breakfast ahead of time. And that'll be a blessing. And then we've got our Burn the Mortgage Banquet, Friday, April 22nd. Uh, and that is going to be with Brother Treber. We're going to charge $10 a person. All right. Uh, the church will probably lose a little bit of money on the, uh, on the meal side of it. I imagine we haven't bought food yet. Uh, but uh, we want you here. And uh, you might be here and you say, uh, Pastor, I don't have a, you know, a bunch of money to give. I hope that you can still come be a part. I hope you see uh, uh, the excitement uh, and, uh, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, if anything, it'll give you something to pray about and uh, be a part of. And so hope you'll uh, make plans there to attend uh, that. Let's stand together. We'll sing our song of the month, our new song of the month. And uh, this great song, He Lives on High. Christ the Savior came from heaven's glory to redeem the lost from sin and shame. On his brow he wore the thorn crown gory, and upon Calvary he took my blame. He lives on high, he lives on high, triumphant over sin and all its stain. He lives on high, he lives on high, Someday he's coming again. He arose from death and all its sorrow to dwell in that land of joy and love. He is coming back some glad tomorrow, and he'll take all his children home above. He lives on high, he lives on high, Triumphant over sin and all its name. He lives on high, he lives on high. Someday he's coming again. Weary soul to Jesus come confessing. Redemption from sin he offers thee. Look to Jesus and receive a blessing. There is life, there is joy and victory. He lives on high, he lives on high, triumphant over sin and all its stain. He lives on high, he lives on high, someday he's coming again. Amen. You may be seated while our ushers come for the offering. And boy, that one line of the song has a mouthful to get in there, doesn't it? So uh, I got the first stanza down all right, but then the second stanza, 
Got gobbled up in words there. Amen. Johnny, why don't you come and lead some prayer? Uh, dear Jesus, thank you for the day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come here and worship you. Help give Pastor the wisdom for the service tonight and help the offering meets the needs of the church. Amen. Amen. Let's take our hymnals one final time and turn to song number 118. Song number 118, I Need Thee Every Hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like God. Oh, 
humbly took his cross and died to save the lost, their sins forgiven. The greatest story ever told is of this Jesus, how he came to earth to rescue sinful men, sin from the Father above all, to sacrifice in love and take our place and give an ending grace. This Son of God who gave his life and took the grave, obeyed his Father's will despite the but death could not contain his power, his love, his grace, for he is risen. The greatest story ever told is of this Jesus, how he came to earth to rescue sinful men, sin from the Father. Thank you. Take your Bibles, please. Turn to Job chapter number 40. Job chapter number 40. Job chapter number 40. Brother William, good to see you here tonight. Amen. Job chapter 40. And look with me at verse number 15, Job chapter 40, verse number 15. The Bible says this, Behold now behemoth which I made with thee, he eateth grass as an ox. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, and the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. And tonight, uh, none of you were prepared for the sermon like Gabriel Yosef was. Gabriel, raise up those, raise up. If my screens go out tonight, all right, Gabriel's got me covered here because tonight... Tonight, we're going to preach on dinosaurs, all right? And so he's, he's ready to go there for... Uh, so none of you brought your dinosaurs, but he brought his dinosaurs. And so I, I said, man, praise the Lord. If my screens go out, I guess you can come up and do all the illustrations for me. But, uh, let's go to Lord in prayer and ask uh, his blessing on the service. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for tonight. Lord, as we look at uh, this subject, dinosaurs in the Bible... Lord, it is a subject that I love to talk about. I, I do love the subject of dinosaurs, and Lord, as many folks do. But God, I do pray that you'd help us to uh, realize the importance of knowing about this subject. And Lord, how Satan has used uh, dinosaurs to promote evolution. And God, I pray that, uh, that you would help us to realize uh, the truth about them and uh, the truth according to the Bible. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, the devil has used uh, this idea of dinosaurs quite a bit to try to promote the idea of evolution, that uh, God didn't create the world, uh, that the, the world uh, has been around for millions and millions of years. Uh, notice this article here uh, from uh, National Geographic there in 1993, uh, very first line says, no human being has ever seen a live dinosaur. Now, you know, the truth is, is how can this guy know that? Has he talked to everybody that's ever lived? 
Did he talk to you before he wrote that article? Did he uh, talk to people across the world? Uh, uh, did he talk to people back in time? Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty presumptuous statement. So no live person has ever seen a live dinosaur. The truth is, is uh, the devil uses dinosaurs uh, really to promote the idea of evolution. Uh, you just pick up any uh, child's book that uh, deals with dinosaurs, and uh, you can already guess what the first word of that book is going to be. Millions of years ago. Uh, I remember uh, I was in, a, I think it was a dentist's office or a doctor's office at one point, and I saw a, a little book about dinosaurs. I said, I want to see if uh, this is true. You know, picked it up. Sure enough, first word, millions, millions of years ago. Uh, really, that's uh, what uh, the devil has used. Uh, the truth is, is dinosaurs are cool. Everybody likes dinosaurs, right? Brother Ben is already excited. Normally, he's sleeping about this time. But he's like, wow, I'm awake today and uh, ready to go. Uh, why? We like dinosaurs. Just kidding, Brother Ben. But uh, we like dinosaurs. And the devil has attached something that uh, people like with this concept of evolution. And uh, by that, uh, anytime you see dinosaur, you automatically think millions of years ago. Uh, but is that true? Is that true according to the Bible? Uh, of course, in science textbooks, they teach that about 65 million years ago, there was some kind of asteroid that hit the earth and wiped out the dinosaurs. Uh, now, once again, uh, how do they know that? How do they know that? Uh, were they around 65 million years ago? Uh, did they see that? Was that on the news? You know, I mean, how? Uh, if it was on the news, I probably wouldn't believe it. But uh, uh, how do they know that? Probably CNN, right, if it was. But uh, how do they know that? Uh, what do we believe about the dinosaurs? Well, uh, what we believe is found in the, the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And Exodus chapter 20, verse 11 says, For in six days the Lord God made all the earth, the sea, and all that in them is. You know what that means? God made the dinosaurs too. He made the dinosaurs too. And by the way, if he made them all in six days and Adam was uh, made on the sixth day, you know what that means? That means that Adam must have seen dinosaurs. Adam must have seen dinosaurs. Uh, so uh, what are dinosaurs? Uh, big lizards that lived with man. That's what they are. Uh, they have always lived with man. Oh, I think we can see that uh, from history even, that they've always lived with man. It's not like uh, the science textbooks and like the historians try to say, well, you know, 65 million years ago, you know, but, uh, with prehistoric man and the Flintstones and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. Uh, dinosaurs have always been, always been around. They've been, uh, they were around with Adam and Eve. Uh, sometimes people ask the question, well, were dinosaurs on the ark? Uh, well, you know, the uh, Bible says uh, Noah took two of every kind of animal. You say, uh, how is that possible? Miss Vicky said it. Whoa. How is that possible? Well, you know, uh, when Noah went on the ark and when Noah built the ark, he was 600 years old. I'm sure he had a few ideas about how to get these animals safely on the ark. Uh, for instance, let's not let the woodpecker uh, roam free on the, on the ark. That could cause a problem, all right? Uh, you know, another thought that a 600-year-old man might have, you know, maybe we could bring dinosaurs that are babies on the ark. You don't have to bring full-blown, big, huge 80-foot apatosauruses or whatever on the ark. You can bring babies, just make sure you get a pink one and a blue one, all right? Uh, uh, that would be important later. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, there were uh, dinosaurs on the ark. A uh, couple of ideas uh, behind bringing babies. First of all, they're smaller, all right, which is much, much uh, less space. Uh, they weigh less, all right, which is important for the boat, right? Uh, they eat less, which is also important because you had to have all your food on board there, all right? They sleep a lot more which is also a benefit, all right? Uh, they're tougher. You think about, uh, you know, uh, I'm starting to see this with uh, hanging out with some of these young adults, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in the youth activities too, uh, you know, when I was younger, you know, I used to be able to run and fall and bounce and get back up and keep running, you know. 
now I run and fall and bounce and break and lay there for a while and uh, all those sor sorts of things. You know, when you're babies, uh, you are more durable. It's just true. All right. Uh, uh, they, uh, number six there. After the flood, they'll live longer and produce offspring, which was the whole reason why Noah was bringing them on the ark to, to begin with. Uh, so he naturally brought babies. It only makes sense. Uh, so yes, uh, the Bible, uh, Bible is true. Uh, Noah brought the uh, dinosaurs on the ark with him. Uh, but after the, uh, after the flood and after the ark, uh, dinosaurs faced uh, some serious problems. Uh, we mentioned a little bit of that last week. Dinosaurs faced a different kind of climate when they got off the ark. Uh, last week, if you were here, we talked about the fact that uh, God made some sort of water barrier uh, that uh, went around the earth, that there was more oxygen in the earth uh, in, before the flood than there was after the flood. The oxygen pressure well, it was pressurized. It was a double pressure. Uh, literally uh, speaking, they tested oxygen from uh, before, uh, you know, it's found in little uh, amber uh, crystals. They, they tested that oxygen uh, from 50 to 35% more oxygen in those little bubbles of, uh, of, uh, uh, of oxygen uh, than there are today in the atmosphere. Um, as, as we mentioned last week, um, uh, 80 foot Apatosaurus had the same size nostrils as a horse, uh, a dinosaur could not breathe today being 80 foot long. The dinosaurs couldn't be that big. Not with that size nostril. I mean, uh, they'd light a fire just trying to breathe, you know, uh, with the friction from the air. Um, you know, there, there had to be better oxygen earlier on. They got off the ark, that, that water barrier was gone, that water, uh, that, that pressurized uh, was gone. And uh, there was some adaption that took place. Uh, of course, evolution teaches uh, 65 million years ago, uh, all the dinosaurs were wiped out. Uh, but once again, uh, we see that uh, really historically, we can see that uh, there's been plenty of stories about people and dinosaurs being together. Uh, notice some of the problems they had. Uh, first of all, dinosaurs died uh, due to climate changes that happened after the flood. Uh, the second problem they had was uh, that uh, people hunted them. People hunted them. Uh, think about all the stories we have about uh, slaying the dragon, right. Right? right? Mario killed the dragon, right? Uh, in Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, right? Uh, uh, but uh, no, uh, the truth is we got a lot of stories about uh, of people killing dragons. Uh, you say, now wait a minute, uh, dragons? Are you saying, uh, Pastor, that you believe in dragons? Absolutely. Could I say the Bible believes in dragons too? It does, absolutely. Uh, see, the word dinosaur wasn't invented until 1841. Uh, the Bible that we had, the English Bible, uh, uh, of course, was written, the, the Bible was written well before that. Uh, our English uh, Bible was uh, translated in 1611. All right, so our Bible is older than the word dinosaur. So the word dinosaur is not found in our Bible, but the word dragon is found in the Bible. Consider Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 33. It says their wine is as the poison of dragons. Uh, consider Psalm 74, verse 13. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the water. In fact, there are 34 times in the Bible where the word dragon is mentioned. You say, are dragons real? Absolutely they are real. They're found in the Bible. Uh, this is interesting. In 1946, this is a 1946 uh, dictionary, uh, under the word dragon, notice the first uh, definition, now rare. Not now extinct, now rare. It says a huge serpent... Uh, then definition number two, a fabulous animal, a generously monstrous and winged, scaly serpent, lizard, cesorian. Uh, it's interesting, very first definition, now rare. I have an 1848 dictionary back in the back, and uh, it has a definition that says, uh, it, it says a, a basically a, a, a serpentine type creature uh, of that, uh, uh, I wish I'd have gotten the whole definition, uh, but it, it treats it like, yeah, this is an animal. Today, the devil tries to make it look like uh, dragons are mythical and, you know, mysterious and millions of years old. 
Uh, but the Bible has the word dragon uh, throughout it. Uh, it's interesting, uh, of course, uh, if God made uh, dinosaurs with Adam, uh, Satan knew, I can't fool Adam with dinosaurs. Uh, of course, if Noah, uh, you know, brought them on the ark, uh, there's no way that the devil could have said to Noah, you know, hey, dinosaurs are millions of years old. Uh, that wouldn't have worked. But after the flood, for about 4,000 years, dinosaurs were dying off, and, and, and Satan started realizing he could use this idea of dinosaurs to convince people about evolution. Uh, you see, uh, as dinosaurs died off, we stopped talking about them a lot, and uh, we stopped uh, uh, maybe mentioning them. They, the stories and the IDs became a little bit more fabulous, and eventually we started digging up dinosaur bones and saying, wow, these bones must be really old. And uh, people started putting uh, dates on there like uh, millions of years old. And pretty soon now uh, we've come to this idea that dinosaurs are all millions of years old. Uh, but the truth is, is uh, you know, really by 1809, most people had forgotten about dinosaurs until we started digging them up again. But there's plenty of stories about dinosaurs. Everybody's read a good uh, dinosaur tale, right? A uh, dragon tale where... Uh, you know, the knight comes and slays the dragon and uh, rescues the princess. Uh, truth is, is uh, people kill dinosaurs for many reasons. Uh, notice uh, number one there, for meat. Uh, think of how many, you know, hamburgers or dinosaur burgers you could get out of one uh, uh, Brachiosaurus or whatever. Uh, that'd be pretty good. Uh, they were a menace. Can you imagine living next door to a dinosaur? You know, there goes your garden, right? Uh, you know, as he stomps down on it. Uh, that'd be a pain. Uh, to be a hero, uh, as I said, uh, plenty of uh, stories about people slaying dragons. Uh, to prove uh, superiority, uh, we're going to conquer the land. Uh, competition for the land, um, you know, uh, saying we're going to drive out all the big, ferocious beasts. Uh, and finally, believe it or not, to medicinal purposes. Do you know how many Chinese remedies there are out there that says uh, use dino dinosaur saliva, dinosaur bones, uh, you know, all these kind of weird medicines. Why would they have medicines that have fake stuff in them? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, think about all the stories there are uh, written about dinosaurs. Now, once again, uh, these, uh, some of these, they'd say, well, these are mystical stories. Uh, you know, uh, it's amazing that a lot of stories uh, have their background in truth. Uh, how about the Epic of Gilgamesh? I have a copy of that over uh, in the other building there. Uh, he, Gilgamesh, slayed a dragon. Uh, here's a Chinese story, a uh, Chinese legend of a famous uh, Chinese man named Yu. It says, after the great flood, kind of interesting, Yu surveyed the land of China, divided it into sections. He built channels and drains, uh, uh, drained the water off uh, the sea land, helped make land vi viable again. Uh, are livable again. Uh, many snakes and dragons were driven from the marshlands when you created new farmlands. It's kind of interesting there. Uh, you know, gotta gotta you know get the land together. Gotta take and, and drive away all the dragons. It almost sounds a matter of fact. Uh, notice this uh, this um, pa uh, slate palette from uh, uh, from uh, Egypt. Uh, it's from the first pharaoh there, uh, King Nimer. Uh, and it's got two long necked dragons. You see them over here? And they're fighting or kissing. Something like that. They're necking, all right? Uh, <laughs> older kids, are, older ones are, or younger ones are like, what? Uh, but uh, why would you put something on, uh, on that if it wasn't real? If uh, you hadn't seen something like that? Uh, here's uh, the walls of Babylon. Uh, I've got a chance to see, not, not this particular one, but uh, uh, on the walls of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar had lions and dragons. I've seen the lions. I've seen the original lions from the wall of uh, Babylon. I might have even touched it, but uh, it was an accident, I'm sure. But uh, uh, it was Babylon's wall. I couldn't help myself, but uh, it wasn't under glass. Uh, but there was uh, uh, dragons as well. Now, why would uh, Nebuchadnezzar build a wall that has reliefs of one fake animal and one real animal? That doesn't make any sense. He had dragons and lions on him. Alexander the Great, uh, when uh, trying to conquer parts of India in 326 B.C., said his soldiers 
were scared away by dragons living in caves. Uh, St. George in A.D. 275 uh, slayed a dragon, uh, according to history. Uh, Beowulf, uh, a story that we read in our English literature books, uh, he killed a couple of dragons, finally was killed by a dragon, uh, as the story goes. Uh, in 900 A.D., all right, Gabriel, here's your, here's your cue here, all right, uh, uh, an Irish writer told of an animal. He's got a stegosaurus over there. All right, you got it up there. Good, man. All right, good man. Uh, with a, a head similar to a horse, it also had thick legs and strong claws. It had iron nails on its tail. That's a pretty good description of a stegosaurus right there. Pretty good description. Here's a woodcut of a Viking uh, 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 from the Viking era. It's a woodcut of a dragon swallowing a man. By the way, uh, did you ever notice those Viking boats? had dragon's heads on them? I wonder why you'd put a dragon head as you were sailing across the ocean. By the way, the Vikings did make it across the ocean, and they made it to the New World. Uh, that's been pretty proven at this point in time. Uh, they made it at least up to Canada area. Um, do, you, do you wonder why in, in some little wooden sailing boat you might put a dragon's head on your uh, front end? Uh, maybe like, well, you know, if... Uh, brothers and sisters come up, maybe they'll think like, oh, that's one of our relatives, and leave us alone. Uh, why would you do that otherwise? Marco Polo lived in China around uh, AD 271. He reported that the emperor used dragons to pull his chariots in uh, parades. Uh, <clears throat> in 1611, same year as our Bible was uh, translated, uh, in China, the emperor appointed the post of royal dragon feeder. Now, why would you have a royal dragon feeder if you didn't have any dragons to feed? Once again, uh, these, are, these are things that are pretty close to our history at this point in time. Uh, <clears throat> in the city of Narluc, uh, France, it was renamed in honor of a dragon uh, that uh, was uh, said it was bigger than an ox, had long, sharp, pointed uh, horns, and a head, uh, described kind of like a triceratops. And they, they renamed the whole town based on the killing of that dragon. Here's a, a, a painting from uh, the Aborigines uh, in uh, Australia, and what appears to be some kind of maybe a plesiosaurus. Uh, notice uh, the guys are all around there with spears. They're kind of upset because it looks like their comrade got swallowed by the dragon. He's pictured in the belly of the dragon. Once again, why would you make a, a cave drawing of uh, a creature if you'd never seen him before? It doesn't make any sense. In Acamburo, Mexico, uh, there were 56,500 ceramic uh, figurines that were found. And notice all the shapes of them. They're dinosaur-type uh, shapes. Here's one. Look at the long tail on that thing. Uh, the dinosaurs range from 3 inches to 6 feet, made of ceramic jade, uh, stone, and obsidian. Uh, buried in a pit, uh, a 20 by 40 pit, apparently in haste to avoid capture by the Spaniards in uh, the 1600s. Um, 56,000 figurines, all dragon-like. Why would you uh, make something like that if you'd never seen something like that before? In 1535, the Spanish conquistadors uh, reported uh, that they had found these stones with strange creatures carved in them around Ica, Peru. Uh, these are called the Ica, Peru, Peruvian uh, stones. And notice uh, the different figurines there. Notice uh, the one there on the right looks quite a bit like a, a dragon. Uh, notice this one here looks like a T-Rex, and he's got a hold of the guy, uh, and it looks like he's about ready to eat the guy. All right, not very happy. Uh, once again, why would you put carvings on stones if you had never seen them before. By the way, notice something kind of interesting. Notice on these, the last one had it as well, notice the circular patterns. You know, the truth is, is uh, until, uh, you know, not that long ago, um, we had dinosaur bones, but a dinosaur bone doesn't tell you anything what a dinosaur looks like, right? All you know is, uh, is its structure. You don't know what it actually looks like. Uh, until uh, a few years ago, uh, they uncovered some dinosaur fossilized skin. Uh, 
right there. Notice the circular patterns. So how do those guys in Peru know that dinosaurs had circular patterns on them if they had never seen one before? How did they know that? Here's some more uh, fossilized dinosaur skin there. Notice the circular patterns. Uh, in uh, 1999, an entire mummified dinosaur was discovered. Notice uh, it says, faster than a T-Rex, the dinosaur mummy that had to run for its life. And notice the bottom there, skin and tissue preserved in rare fossil discovery. Uh, tissue. Preserved. It was dug up in 2004. An amateur uh, archaeologist found it on his uncle's ranch, uh, hid it for five years, came back, uh, started digging it out, realized it had fossilized skin and said, I need some professional help. Uh, and uh, they dug it out, an entire dinosaur. Uh, they named it Dakota because it was found in North Dakota. Uh, here's another uh, entire fossilized dinosaur that uh, has been uh, found. Uh, they, they nicknamed him Leonardo. All right, uh, because I guess they found some graffiti that says Leonardo loves, you know, somebody, all right, and so uh, near it. And so they said, oh, let's call this one Leonardo. Uh, it's a duck-billed dinosaur. It was found in Montana in the year 2000. An entire dinosaur, fossilized. Uh, notice fossilized muscle. By the way, both dinosaurs fossilized contents of the stomach. They can tell you what their last meal was. Uh, and they can tell you what kind of plants they were eating. Uh, they've been able to do some sort of x-rays and, and be able to get in there. Uh, they, can see, they can see organs fossilized, uh, stomach contents fossilized. Uh, by the way, do you think that stuff lasted for millions of years? Here's the newest one. Uh, uh, a Nadiosaurus found in 2011 in Canada. And this is, they're saying, the best preserved uh, dinosaur so far. Notice the body armor still on it. A uh, stomach content still there. Uh, uh, organ still there. A uh, tissue still there. Uh, by the way, if you read up on all these, uh, all of these are from sites uh, that, that believe in evolution, and they're saying, well, that was, this one's 110 million years old. The other couple were 65 million years old. Uh, and they say, you know, it's absolutely amazing uh, that we have uh, tissue uh, still preserved in these. Uh, and they said, uh, uh, you know, it's amazing. It was just some freak accident that, uh, uh, that it happened to get uh, buried under a wet uh, you know, wet thing that protected it from, uh, um, you know, scavengers eating it up so that it could fossilize. You know, maybe it just uh, wasn't a freak thing. Maybe it was just the fact that it got uh, put in a worldwide flood, and uh, which wiped out everything, including the scavengers. And maybe it got buried alive and fossilized just the way it is. Maybe it's not 65 million years old, but maybe it's just a couple thousand years old. Kind of interesting. Uh, here's one. Uh, here's a January 11, 2020. Uh, it's amazing anybody got anything done in 2020. But uh, mummified uh, skin suggests duck-billed dinosaurs were gray like elephants. Now, once again, uh, no one's ever seen a, a dinosaur, but it's weird. weird the, those guys from Ica, Peru, could draw circle patterns on on rocks. It's amazing they could draw the different uh, structures. They could draw the armor and all that stuff. And yet, how did they know that from just bones? How did they know that? Uh, no one's ever seen a dinosaur? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. How about the, this? Uh, in uh, May, of, May 13, 1572, an Italian uh, <clears throat> a scientist named Ulysses, and a big long name after that, uh, an Italian name, obtained the dead body of a dragon that, had, uh, that a farmer had recently killed and mounted in a museum for display. Um, that's pretty amazing. This thing was actually mounted in a museum in the 1500s in, in Italy. In the 1500s. All dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago. Okay, well, tell that to the Italian people, that, uh, uh, you know, the Italian farmer that killed one in the 1500s. Uh, millions of years ago? I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Notice uh, what the Bible says. It says uh, in Job chapter 40, uh, we're reading about a, 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 di a dinosaur, I believe, named Behemoth. Notice it says, he lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reeds and fins. The word fins means a swamp. And, uh, you know, it's amazing that uh, when you start uh, uh, looking at stories and stuff from uh, places outside of America, it's amazing how many people out there still believe in dinosaurs. Um, here's a book written by, by the way, an evolutionist. He's not a creationist. Uh, he is a, a professor at the University of Chicago. His name is Roy Mackle, and uh, he, wrote a, he wrote a book entitled A Living Dinosaur. Uh, he made several trips over to Congo, Africa. And if you know anything about the Congo, it's just a big swamp. Uh, you know, a bunch of mosquitoes, a bunch of, I mean, you, you, you move like one mile an hour uh, trudging through the swamp. Uh, Mr. Mackle went over and, uh, and interviewed a lot of the pygmies and people that live there and uh, started showing them pictures of different uh, creatures and uh, showed them pictures of hippopotamuses and, you know, yeah, we've got those and showed them pictures of elephants. We got those. Showed them a picture of a dinosaur and uh, they said, oh, yeah, that's Mokali Mimbi. We don't see him around too much, but uh, when he's around, uh, he scares away the elephants and the, and the hippopotamuses. Uh, he controls the river when he's around. Uh, by the way, if you ever watch the Discover, I think they had uh, uh, Monster Quest did a whole episode on uh, Mokali Mimbi. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the pygmies down there, uh, they haven't been taught that dinosaurs went extinct. Uh, and so uh, you talk to them, and they say, uh, yeah, you know, that, that, that creature's around. Uh, by the way, Congo, 55,000 square miles of swamp. You say, uh, are there, is there stuff in there that uh, we've not seen? Yeah, there's stuff in there that we've not seen. There's stuff in there we'll probably never see. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, there's a missionary uh, that had been there for 43 years. His name was Eugene Thomas. Uh, he had two pygmies uh, in his church that claimed they killed one in 1959. They killed it and ate it. Um, and uh, kind of interesting there. Uh, in uh, <clears throat> Indonesia, uh, or in Kenya, I'm sorry, uh, they have another creature that they call Kangamato, which would be the equivalent of our um, um, uh, pterodactyl. Uh, they, they have that in uh, Congo. Uh, there's a, a guy, his name is Steve Ramadi, uh, went to LSU, part of the uh, uh, Kenyan Olympic team. Uh, said that his uh, villagers, uh, that was uh, a creature that terrorized their village. And it uh, says their favorite uh, food was uh, decaying human flesh. By the way, in the Philippines, uh, they call it aswan. And uh, it's one of the, the things that mothers use to scare their little kids to not go out at night. Is uh, be careful, the aswan will get you. And uh, they have all kinds of uh, things. And by the way, so those, some of those people truly do believe in that creature over there. It's amazing. I, I talked to a few folks there and, you know, what do you think? What do, you, do you believe in Aswang? And, uh, oh yeah, we believe in it. And so kind of, uh, kind of interesting. In Indonesia, uh, the same creature is called a Ropen. Uh, there's a missionary there, Mr. Jerry Williams, had been there 28 years, uh, said that uh, he had natives uh, that uh, would, had seen them. Uh, also a missionary friend of his had seen one. Uh, they said that they, they glow in the dark. And uh, there's a bioluminescent uh, uh, plankton that's over on the, on, the, on the rivers, and they think that's what they get into, makes them glow in the dark there. Um, if all this is true about dinosaurs living uh, with man, um, are they mentioned in the Bible? Well, uh, notice where we are, Job chapter 40, and I'm going to flip through a couple of these slides there. Of course... Uh, Job is, is one where God talks to Job about all the different things that are in the world that he doesn't understand. I'm going to flip through some of these, all right? Sorry, some of the funny slides there. Uh, we've talked about those before. But uh, notice in Job chapter 40, verse 15, uh, God says, Behold now, behemoth. Now, once again, uh, the word dinosaur was not around uh, until the 1800s. Uh, but but uh, he does tell Job, Behold this behemoth. Now, if you have a study Bible, you'll notice in the side there, usually they'll say it's an elephant or a hippopotamus, uh, but those study notes are just somebody's opinion. They're not Scripture. Uh, we can look at the Bible and, and uh, see a description of it. Uh, notice uh, verse number 16. It's in your Bible there or up there on the screen. It says, Lo, 
He has strength in his loins, and the force, uh, and the force is in the navel of his belly. So what is it? he's got big, uh, big uh, legs, and he's got a big belly. Well, the truth is, is that could be an elephant. He's got big legs and a big belly. Uh, it could be a hippopotamus. He's got big legs and a big belly. Could be a dinosaur. He's got big legs and a big belly. Could be him, all right? Uh, he's got big legs and a big belly. Or him, all right? Uh, but uh, we have to look at more scripture. Notice verse 17. All right, I just lost verse 17, but uh, notice uh, it says, uh, He moveth his tail like a cedar. Look at the elephant's tail. Does that look like a cedar tree to you? He moveth his tail like a cedar tree, you know, uh, whipping it around. How about the hippopotamus? All right. Um, I don't think the footnotes are right here. Uh, it doesn't match. Uh, think about a dinosaur's tail, though. That looks like a tree. That looks very much like a tree. Notice uh, verse uh, 18. It says, his bones are like uh, strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. Here's a brachiosaurus toe bone. That looks pretty tough. Uh, here's the model of what uh, a dinosaur leg of, I believe it's a Brachiosaurus, would look like compared to a man. Bars of iron? I think so. Uh, here's a footprint of a dinosaur in Glen Rose, Texas. Uh, you can go down to Accretion Museum down there in Glen Rose, Texas, and see they've got casters, uh, casts made of these uh, footprints. Here's a boy taking the bath in one. All right. Uh, they estimated that a dinosaur would weigh about 100 tons, equivalent of 14 school buses. If he stepped on you, you'd be deeply impressed. <laughs> but he was a very big boy. Verse number 19, he is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can approach uh, his sword, uh, can make his sword to approach him. He's the chief of the ways of God. He's the biggest thing God made. And that sure seems like it describes a dinosaur. Uh, nobody's ever seen a dinosaur then why did God tell uh, Job, behold now Behemoth, if he couldn't behold him? Why would he say, uh, go look at Behemoth? Uh, I'm sorry, God, you know, he's been extinct uh, 65 million years. Uh, I don't think so. All right, uh, dinosaurs have been around. Uh, here's a story. Uh, Hans uh, uh, Edge, a missionary to Greenland, drew a sketch of a sea monster in 1734. Notice how close we're getting to our time now. Um, sea monsters in the Bible? Absolutely. Look at uh, Psalm 74, 13 and 14. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the water. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces. Oftentimes, uh, the sea dinosaurs were called Leviathan in the Bible. Isaiah 27, verses 1 and 2. In that day, the Lord, uh, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. The Bible talks about sea dinosaurs as well. Here's a, a picture from a book we have in our school library. It's called Shipwrecks and Sea Monsters uh, of the California Coast. This is a picture of uh, a dinosaur that, uh, that um, washed up on Monterey Beach in 1925. Monterey, 1925. That wasn't that long ago, really. Notice the head. Notice the duck build. Uh, by the way, this was live tissue. It wasn't fossilized. It was actual flesh. Uh, notice there's the head. There's the body. Uh, Here's a closer picture. You can see the body. You can see the guy standing by it uh, for, for scope. Uh, notice the neck, 20 feet long. By the way, there was a, a judge that was on site at the time. Uh, he uh, wrote a description of it and uh, uh, categorized it. He says, I would say that it was some sort of plesiosaurus. That's what the judge uh, uh, 
that was on site uh, uh, testified to and wrote down in his journal. I would say it, was a, it had flippers and it would have been some sort of plesiosaurus. Uh, live skin. Uh, real life dinosaurs? Not that long ago. Not that long ago. Definitely not millions of years ago. Uh, of course, today they try to say uh, it was a whale or a basking shark. All right, uh, where's the neck on a whale? Uh, that thing had a 20-foot-long neck. A basking shark doesn't have a neck, all right? Uh, but a plesiosaurus does. Very interesting. A lot of things wash up. Here's uh, something that washed up on uh, Nova Scotia. Kind of interesting. Uh, it says, a carcass uh, on Nova Scotia Beach, uh, new to science. So said, we have no idea what this thing was. Some kind of creature, big creature. Uh, it was stinking up the beach. Uh, they finally just took it away to the trash after taking some uh, uh, samples there of it. Uh, here's uh, one. Uh, you've probably seen this picture before. Uh, a Japanese uh, uh, fishing boat uh, pulled up, 32-foot long, weighing 4,000 pounds. Uh, it was uh, pulled up from 900 feet uh, below. Uh, notice uh, the long neck. Uh, there was a marine biologist that was on board the Japanese ship, and here is the sketch that he drew of it before they threw it back over. They had to throw it back over uh, because they were so far out to sea, uh, they would have gotten sickness on the boat if they had kept it. And, uh, but this is the, the sketch that he drew, uh, drew. Notice the flippers on it. By the way, that was rotting flesh. Rotting flesh. Uh, once again, quite a bit like a plesiosaurus there. Here's a picture from 1977, uh, a picture taken by a lady uh, of the Lake Champlain monster. They call it Champ. And uh, uh, there's been several people that have seen that. It's kind of our version of Nessie, uh, but in the Lake Champlain. Notice uh, 58 people on board the Ethan Allen reported a creature 30 to 35 foot long with uh, three to five humps. It cruised uh, with the boat for about 200 feet off the port size for five minutes. Uh, one guy on board says, don't tell me that it was a carp or a sturgeon. That was the skipper. If it was a fish, it weighed 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. That was in 1998. Notice uh, chapter 41 of Job. The Bible says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook? And when God said to Job, uh, you want to pull him up on your fishing hook? Uh, look at verse 2. Canst thou put a hook into his nose or a bore in his jaw, uh, bore his jaw through with a thorn? Uh, will he make uh, many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words to thee? If you pull him up uh, with your fishing hook, uh, do you think he's going to think uh, kindly of you? Uh, he's going to stomp you. Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him uh, as with a bird? Uh, or uh, wilt thou uh, bind him for thy maidens? Are you going to be here? Come here, little Leviathan. No, you're not. Uh, shalt thou make a banquet, uh, companion, uh, companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him for, uh, among the merchants? Canst thou fill uh, his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? Look at this. He says, lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. You want to go after Leviathan, he says, you'll remember it. You'll remember the fight. You'll remember the battle. It says, Behold, uh, the vain hope, uh, the hope of, of him uh, is in vain. Uh, shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? It says, If he came out of that water, you would, you would fall down scared of him. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? You know, God says that you think he's big, I'm bigger. By the way, that was the point that God was making to Job. He says, uh, you know what? Uh, you're complaining about all this stuff. I'm bigger than the dinosaurs are. I'm bigger. Uh, he says, who can open uh, the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together with a close seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. By the way, the battle armor on some of these dinosaurs, uh, you couldn't stick them. You couldn't stick them. Um, they were so heavily protected. Uh, they are joined one to another. They stick together uh, that they cannot be sundered. By his kneesings, 
you say, what is kneesings? It's a funny word, isn't it? Uh, the King James translators uh, did not have an English word for this process, and so they made an English word. Kneesings is the deliberate blowing of air out the nose. It's kind of like sneezings, but sneezings is by accident, right? You go, <laughs> you know? Uh, kneesings is where you blow, your nose out your, uh, blow, blow air out your nose. Notice this, by his kneesings, a light does shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Notice this, out of his mouth goeth burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke, and out of a seething pot or a, a cauldron, his breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. You say, Pastor, do you believe in fire-breathing dragons? Absolutely. The Bible teaches them. The Bible shows them. By the way, lots of different dinosaurs had uh, these different uh, weird-shaped things on the back of their head. Um, scientists have said those are some kind of uh, extension to the nasal uh, cavity, uh, probably where there are certain insects that have the same kind of uh, framework, and they have chemicals that are stored, kind of like the bombardier beetle. And uh, one chemical uh, lights everything up, the other chemical makes sure that it doesn't light up inside of the, the creature. And then there's a third chemical that uh, uh, goes into effect as it's shooting out to uh, nullify the second one. So uh, you say, what is that? One lights the fire, one keeps the fire from being lit, and the third one cancels out the second one when it goes out the door. Uh, so it doesn't blow up there. Um, that's what they think maybe some of these... Uh, things were, these structures were. Look at verse 25. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of the spear. You're going to mess with him? Leviathan? Uh, look at this. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. Uh, he can light the whole sea up. He can make it hot. He maketh a path to shine after him. And one would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Dinosaurs in the Bible? Absolutely. Fire-breathing dragons in the Bible? Absolutely. Uh, dinosaurs millions of years old? I don't think so. Amen. I think history bears that out. And by the way, it's interesting how the Bible... Uh, works just fine with dinosaurs. By the way, the lesson we can learn from the, the dinosaurs is uh, we ought to be careful not to walk in pride. Uh, God's made some pretty big, amazing things out there. And uh, you know what? We're pretty small compared to dinosaurs. And uh, you know what? Uh, God is bigger than dinosaurs, which means he can take care of our problems. Let's pray. Lord, bless tonight. God, I pray that you would help us to... Uh, Understand that we don't have anything to be ashamed of when it comes to the truth of this natural world. Lord, although maybe there was nothing that maybe really convicts us a lot, maybe a lot more factual tonight, God, I pray that uh, we would take these truths, that we would be able to share them with people. Lord, sometimes it's these kind of truths that... Uh, help people to realize that maybe some stuff that they've been taught all their life has not been true. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to know our Bibles and, and, and realize that our Bible does share the truth about these things. And God, I pray that maybe tonight uh, we would mark our Bibles and learn something and, and be able to talk to people about the wonderful truth of dinosaurs. Let's stand to our feet as the piano begins to play. I don't know how God will do business with you, but I do want to have an open invitation tonight. Could I say that a lot of the things that were presented tonight, I have seen people decide that the Bible is true based off of a lot of these things. I think of my brother-in-law who began getting into church because of the truth of creation and realizing that evolution wasn't true and realizing the Bible had truth and the Bible spoke of truth and that truly facts in this natural world uh, really do match with the Bible. 
tonight, I hope that maybe you would ask God to seal some of these thoughts in your mind, that you could talk to people about these things. We don't have to be ashamed of the subject of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs fit just nicely in the Bible. They're mentioned in the Bible. Dinosaurs are a great uh, tool to be able to witness to people. People like reading about dinosaurs. They like knowing about dinosaurs. And truly, when they know that uh, dinosaurs are in the Bible, they oftentimes will listen more to the Bible. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for the attention that was given to your word. I pray that you would bless us now and help us to be able to take some of these things and, and talk to people about them and, and lead people to Christ as a result of them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Teachers, we'll have our meeting in the back here in just a minute or two.